I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. made. Amen. Good morning. Thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you for attending our Sunday school class this morning at the Mighty Temple Church of God in Christ. Uh, let's pray together. God, thank you for this opportunity uh, to share the Word of God. We ask that the Word of God transform us from the inside out. We give you praise and thanks this morning for all that you do and all that you have done and all that you're going to do for us. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, Sunday school. Good morning. Uh, would you turn your Bibles to our lesson this morning, Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 21. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 21. And our subject this morning uh, is works and faith. Lesson again is Galatians 2, 11 through 21. Key text, Galatians chapter 2. Verses 20. Amen. Well, God bless you today. Listen. Verse 20 said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank God that he loved us. And he gave himself for us. All right. God bless you this morning. Listen. Uh, let's read the whole lesson then. Galatians chapter 2 verse 11. Uh, the Bible said, And when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to blame. He was wrong. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Gentiles are all those people that are not Jews. But when they were calm, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. We'll talk about that in a few moments. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with that dissimulation, hypocrisy. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, liveth out of the man of Gentiles, and do not do as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even when we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the thing which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I, for I through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I, and again, we just read 20, so let me go to 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Uh, so let's look at the context of the lesson this morning. Um, it mentioned Antioch. The church of Antioch was Paul's home church. And many Gentile Christians belonged to the church of Antioch. Uh, most of the Jewish Christians belonged 
to the church in Jerusalem. The first Christians, we got to understand, were Jewish Christians. They were Jewish converts. It, it don't kind of look like it now because uh, all these, we got Gentiles all in the church. But the first church in Jerusalem was full of Jews. Peter, James, John, Jesus, these are all Jews. And, and, and so they filled the church of Jerusalem. The church of Jerusalem had, um, um, they were Jewish converts, so they still had the mindset of the law. They still followed the ordinances of the law. Although they were Jews and Christ had saved them, they were still doing certain things, circumcisions and so forth and on, because they were so used to that. They had a history of, of, of being circumcised. The newcomers versus the old comers, just like in our church here today. You have a young folk versus old folk, right? I'm not calling you old, I'm just saying, you know. Uh, let me go with more, more correct vernacular, seniors, all right. And so, uh, and so you got, you know, seniors, and, and so you from different areas, different Asian stations, so you think differently. And, um, and so, so sometimes you run into issues. Now the two groups often opposed each other in that doctrine because Paul was teaching the Gentiles that, you know, you just love Christ, serve him, and, 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 and uh, you're okay. The Jewish convert was saying, listen, we got to add some mess to this. We've been circumcised. And you know that Jesus Christ was circumcised the eighth day he was born. He took him to the temple and he was circumcised. And uh, Simeon and, and, and um, uh, Anna, Anna was there praying. And so Jesus Christ, although he ushered in the age of grace, he was born under the law. See, he, he was born under the law, but he brought in grace. And so folk were just used to the law system. And, and, and uh, so this grace was kind of new to folk. So, you know, he kind of like pushback, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember, you know, when uh, praise dancing was very popular. They still do it now. But when it first started, you know, so they still looking. Well, what is this? You know, and, you know, folk twirling around. And, you know, hey, you know, folk, you know, young people. They, hey, this is this is it. And, but the, the other senior saint were looking. You know, they finally kind of, you know, okay, well. Kind of went along. I don't know how much they like it, but they went along with it. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 so those who trusted in the law involved, uh, uh, was op opposed to those that trusted in God by faith. So let's kind of walk down through the lesson just a little bit. Um, the, 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 the first topic to talk about here, dissidence. Now, you know, dissidence is just a big word. I don't think it means lack of agreement. You know, so that, that's all it means. So it's not, you know, we, get, we throw all these big words, folk get all confused, and, but it just means that they didn't agree, lack of agreement, right? And so uh, the first thing is uh, the lesson talks about acting in fear. And sometimes we got to be careful about that because we can see in this lesson we might find ourselves in the same spot or the same situation. We might act the same way. So before we pass judgment, <coughs> on Peter so quickly, then we might kind of look at ourselves and see. Uh, so uh, the Bible said in verse one, uh, so Paul is saying, listen, he said now when, when, um, when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. And one good thing that he, he had said, he, he was brave enough to confront him, right? He wasn't talking behind his back, he just talked to him, right? So that's one good thing we could, we could pick from this. This verse, because he was he was wrong, he was the blame. <laughs> see, see what he, he said. Listen, Antioch now was the it, it was a capital city in Syria, but it was it was it was Gentile, so most of the Gentiles lived there. They had a lot of Greeks in that area too, Gentiles and Greeks. They lived there, and and uh, uh, th this in the church of Antioch, this is where we really got our name Christians from. Because the Greeks and the Gentiles, uh, they were looking at these people that got saved because, you know, they were the Greek city, so they had idols, different things. So they said, these people are, I'm watching them. How many folks, you know, that people watch you, watch you? When you say you're a Christian on your job and your 
community, wherever you are, classroom, focus. they're going to watch you. They might not say nothing to you, but they're watching you, right, to see if you're keeping up with what you say you are, right? And don't get mad at them because they have a right uh, to see you acting like you're supposed to act. You say you're a Christian, you're supposed to act a certain way. So they got a right to, to see you acting like that. And so if they question you, don't be mad at them because they, you know, they say, well, Christians will be doing this. And Christians don't supposed to be that. Now, they might not be a Christian, but they know what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> now, they already know that. So, and, and so in Antioch, they watched these people that had got converted to Christ. And they said, listen, they watched them through stress, through hardship and difficulty. They watching them, right? People watch how you act. They said, these people act so much like Christ. We're going to call them Christians. So that's how they got the word Christian where it came from, because they were acting like Christ. Now, on our jobs and where we are, we're supposed to be acting the same way, like him. And they ought, you know, they ought to identify us as Christians. Now, this was not a term of endearment, uh, really, because they were, they were, oh, they're acting like Christ. But, you know, hey, that was, they were, to us, it's endearment. To them, it, it wasn't endearment. But, they, but that's where we got the name Christian from. And other than this was the leading city in the Roman Empire. The city of Antioch. So Paul said, I went to this big city and I withstood him. I opposed him. I resisted him. And but here's the good thing. He said, face to face. That's what I, I, I confronted him, not behind his back. I confronted him to his face. Paul said, because he was wrong. Peter was at fault. And he's going to explain why Peter was at fault. You hypocrite, Peter. So I'm just going to tell you face to face. I'm not going to go tell Brother Bob, hey man, Sister Bob. I'm going to tell you. You're the one that's wrong. Right? And so that's how leaders are supposed to do. We just talk to each other. Right? And if we're wrong, we're wrong. How many folks know if you're wrong, you're wrong? That's, it. that's the end of that. You know, and if you get mad if you're wrong, you're wrong. Now, if you ain't wrong, <coughs> you can explain why you're right. <laughs> So I mean, you can explain it. The other person might be wrong; they're coming. But you, but but you, but but the thing is, it's confrontation. We confront people, and you have to be mad to confront folk. That's not the purpose. We we, we help each other out, keep each other straight. The other person might not know they're wrong, might not know, but we can just show them, right? And once we do that, then we all straight. We all go along. We go to dinner, go to tea, go out to Starbucks. Where are we gonna go? And it would be mad at folk, right? You know, it'd be mad at folk wrong. No. And so, so Peter was wrong. And Paul said, listen, I'm, 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 I'm sent here to work with these. And you, you acting wrong, Peter. And I'm going to confront. I'm going to let you know. Now, here's the thing. He was brave because Peter was a senior apostle. Peter had walked with Jesus. Paul had not. Peter had, you know, sometimes folk got a big title and all that, then we get to say something, no, no. I don't care who, if we're wrong, we're just wrong. That's all that is to that, right? Because that's how God sees it. God ain't going to back down from, from me. Oh, he the past. No, if you're wrong, you're wrong. So listen, right? Now don't y'all come run up to me and tell me, oh, you're wrong. The way I'm going to say, hey, hold it. <laughs> that's kidding. Come on. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, man, some folks just wait on the chain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, look at verse 20. All right, listen. He said, now, he said, now, he, this is why he was wrong. For before the Jews, before certain came from Jerusalem, from James, these were certain Jews, came from James, Peter ate with the Gentiles. He was sitting down, fellowship, and eating with them. <clears throat> he said, when they, when they came, he withdrew himself. He separated himself, fearing, scared. Because the circumcision Jews have come. So, in other words, they came and said, Peter, you mean you eating with these Gentiles? He didn't want to hear that, you know. Now, all the other time before they got there, he was laughing, talking, eating, they were having a good time. But then these other guys come down from James, which was in charge of the church of Jerusalem. He came down. He didn't want to get no bad report to James, so he withdrew from the folk. We didn't eat with them no more. All right? And that was hypocritical. Because he was doing it this time. You know, that's why we have to watch our decisions. 
that we make, right? You know, we do it here, and then over here we don't do it. But folk, wait, wait a minute. Why, why, are you, why are you switching up? Why are you changing up? You're confusing me. That's why we have to be consistent in our living, in our lifestyle. He said before the Jews come, now, now these certain people are Judaizers. That's what you call them, Judaizers. And they, they, they had a certain teaching. They, they, they believed, they were believers, but they thought that, they'd be, that the law had to be kept. So they called them Judaizers. They were like um, right ring people. You know how right ring folk are? You can tell right ring folk the truth. They still don't believe it. Right. I mean, they, they know it's the truth, but they still got an attorney way of thinking. I mean, you won't accept that. It, it's just it's, it's like we're doing now in our society with this stuff that we do. It's just it's crazy. I mean, it's, it ain't even sensible. So that's why Paul said, pray for me that I may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked folks. And some folks just unreasonable when they're wicked. Unreasonable. You can't even reason with them. Right? You know, if you don't believe the Bible and the truth, I mean, I ain't got nothing to say. Amen. I'm up, I mean, you don't believe the Bible and don't believe the truth. I mean, Hey, I just, I, you know, what else I'm going to tell you? Amen. Right? That's, un, that's unreasonable. <laughs> I can't do nothing about that. Right? <laughs> so it said, so said, said they came down from John. Now, James was Jesus' brother. And he was in the charge of the church at Jerusalem. But it said, when they came down, Peter withdrew. He pulled back from them. He acted like he didn't know him. You, you, you ever been before? Y'all laughing and talking, and then you get around somebody else, they act like they don't know you. Oh. The other person is more important than you are. They act like they don't know you no more. Don't speak. They're speaking all the time to you, but not. They won't talk or say because they don't let them know you. Because this other person got more rank or whatever they think, and they, you know, they, 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 they don't associate with you. They don't associate with them. They won't even speak to you. All right? And, uh, I was, I was at the funeral yesterday, Mother let die yesterday, Friday. And uh, so the sister was sitting down there, and I walked by. She said, oh, Elvis, you said, man, you ain't going to speak to her. Well, I didn't say you, how you know? <laughs> 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 I, I mean, just clean it right up, and she's just playing anyway. But, uh, uh, but, but some people are serious about that, right? And they pull away. And folks are watching you, they say, hey, now listen, yesterday, that she's Christian, we got to act the same yesterday, black yes. We got to be consistent with our behavior. Can't be this, you know, acting one way. This that's confusing people. Can't confuse your kids. You at home beating kids up and doing all kinds of stuff, hollering, screaming. And then you come to church, you send up, give a testimony. Your kids, oh, who is that? <laughs> that's confusing. And that's and that's, the circumcision was so important to the Jews because. In the Old Testament, it was a sign of their relationship to God. That's why it was so important to them. And the, and the, and the Jews thought that, listen, if you didn't get circumcised, you ain't got no sign uh, that you, you belong to God. But Paul began to talk about the circumcision of your heart. Let your heart be cut away. If your heart is right, then you're okay. They didn't understand that. So that was the big problem that they were having. Question, how do you decide whether to confront someone directly about that behavior? How do you decide to do that? Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord? Yes. Seek the Lord. Also, if you notice, they're break it down. So when the other Jews, uh, they began to act the same way. In the other words, they, be, they began to act hypocritical like Peter was doing. Because Peter was the standard bearer. And they began to act like Peter, right? They began to pretend. But Peter separated from the Jews. He, he pretended that his motive was right. His motive wasn't right. He was just scared. He said, my motive is right. I'm just obeying the law. Wherever well, you obeying the law, you should have been doing it before the uh, folk came down here. But he was afraid. He didn't want to get no bad report to James. Right. That's why he took away from the Jews. But he was hurting the Gentile Christians that was there. So that was Paul's thing. And then here's the thing here. He acted so bottomless got carried away. In other words, Barnabas joined in on that foolishness. All right? right? Yeah. Now, Barnabas was an encouragement of the saints in Jerusalem. Y'all remember the story of Barnabas? His name was Jose? 
He said he encouraged the saints. But he, he, he turned away. He began to act funny because he was following Peter. Uh, he was deceitful. He was play acting. He began to be full of hypocrisy because he was intimidated. Here's another question. In what situation do you feel intimidated? How did folk intimidate you? Or what, what situation do you feel intimidated? Come on, y'all guys. He said, you know, y'all feel intimidated when the bishop comes? Okay. You work because you're saved. You work because you're already justified by faith. Right? Amen. A man is not declared righteous. A man is not forgiven by the work that you do. Not by your deeds or your action, but by your faith, your conviction of the truth of Jesus. That's how we are justified. That's how we are saved. You got a whole lot of folk in the church that never get saved. They just work. You know what's going to happen to them? On the, on the day of judgment, they're going to come to Jesus. They're going to say, Lord, did I do this in your name? I did this in your name. I did this. He said, I never know you. Mm -hmm. So what is he saying? You never really confessed me. You just went to the church and started working. Mm -hmm. You got to know Jesus Christ. Jesus. You, got, you, got, you, you got to be convicted of the truth of the gospel. Receive him. Then go to work. Don't just go to work, you know. You just can't go to no job and start working. They got to hire you. Right? right? Yeah, you know, you can't go no. You know? Uh, Mr. McKinney told a story about the man went to, he went to college. He just started going to college. He passed, he, yeah, he just sitting there. Took the test, passed the test, everything. And then it was time to graduate. He, 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 he graduated, man. Your name not even on the list. You didn't roll. Just working. So you go to church just working. You got to enroll. You got to get Jesus. Get saved. Then you can work. Amen. Don't work before you get saved. You ain't going to get paid. You got a lot of good people. You got some folk act better than saints. Amen. Go ahead. But that's what's more than the Jehovah Witnesses thing. They think that they can just work and be good and do good and all that there. That they don't get the help of their service God and do all that there. But there's more good than just that. Yeah, they're going to get somewhere, but they're going to be heaven. Amen. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think they know, but they refuse to receive Christ. A lot of people do. I think they know. A lot of people do. They refuse. All right, let's move on to the 1721. Listen, accepting grace. You got We got to accept God's grace in your life. 17 uh, says this. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also be found sinners, that is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now, he's, because these Jews had messed up their thinking, he's trying to straighten them out in their theology. If I build again, Paul said, if I build again the thing which I destroy, I'm a transgressor. So, so Paul, he, he let them know the truth. <clears throat> he said, now, in these two verses, he said, listen, uh, he's telling them, listen, while, while we seek to strive about the Christ, we got to be justified by declaring righteous. We got to be found. And we're not sinners. If you find yourself not not serving Christ, not 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 serving the blood, Amen. You're gonna be a, you're gonna be unrighteous. We got we got to serve Him. Listen. Therefore, here's a here's a phrase. I this is a Jewish phraseology here. Is Christ the minister of sin? What he's saying is Christ is Christ alone. Is Christ a server? Is a servant of sin? We know Christ don't deal with sin. He, he hates sin, but he is it is the special of righteousness, right? He's a life giver to us. Christ fulfilled the law. And we're forgiven by faith. We ain't got to worry about the law when you receive Christ. Why? Because Romans 10 and 4 tells us Christ is the end of the law. Is, 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 is the, the, the termination of the law. To everyone that believes when we come to Christ, Jesus fulfilled the whole law. So in Christ, the law is already fulfilled. 
So we ain't got to be worried about all that. Just come in and serve him and let his righteousness reign in you. And his righteousness will take care of the law. You ain't got to be worried about you keeping the law. You can't keep the law no way. All right. The law was too hard. That's why we had to have grace. had to come in. Amen. You know, if all of us under the law, still, some of us wouldn't even be here. Because hard-headed children, their parents took them to the priest. And the priest took them out of stone. And that was the end of them. That was the end of the hard head and everything. Amen. It's just a lot of us, we wouldn't have made it. Now we have one more grade. Y'all sitting there looking good now, but y'all wouldn't have made it. But Robson, you wouldn't have been in there. Now you said that last night. You told us that on the shed end, so I'm just telling what you said. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it either. I, I would have been right with Brother Roberts. I wouldn't have made it. Amen. You wouldn't have made Brother House neither. <laughs> you look, you seem good. You can do it by Sister Robin right now, but you wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. Mother fool, you wouldn't either. You laughing. <laughs> Listen, we wouldn't have made it. <laughs> None of us would have made it under the law. Amen. We have been stoned. Amen. All right. Amen. For I, uh, Paul said in verse 18, now if I build back what I destroy, I'm a transgressor. Paul said, I, 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 didn't, I don't destroy the law. Uh, uh, the law is set aside over here. The law was okay, but the law couldn't save me. I needed great self control. Your family? Is that a test for you? What about your son and daughter? What about me? Test. Oh. <laughs> test, test, test. <laughs> Amen. All right. That's a, that's a test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a test. I, I mean, you pay, you passed that test. You got it. Oh, you got a PhD. And that means you've been praying hard day. <laughs> Amen. All right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, all of those things, you know. And then again, when things don't frustrate you, like they used to frustrate you. That family member that know you, they know how to push your button. And every time they see you, they got the hand on the lookout, they don't take the hand off the button. Amen. But when they don't see you reacting to all that stuff, they know, and you know, something happened to you. Because they know, if I, they know, oh, you know, if, if um, uh, uh, um, Sister Margo come, I know, uh, uh, um, uh, I know how to, I know how to touch that button. And I know she gonna act up. If Tiffany walk in the room, I just do this, I, I'm, a, I'm looking for her to do the same thing she's been doing for 20 years. But when you don't do that, I go, hey, what's something that happened here? You see, that's evident that Christ it's took over your life. That's evident he's living in you because he don't let you just go off like you used to go off. Because some folk, I mean, they're just waiting on you to go off. I mean, they're just waiting. I mean, I mean, you've been doing good till you saw them. And here they are. I mean, them family you, they're just waiting on you. They haven't heard about you. You know how you've been you're doing all this and all that. you all on Facebook. Now you living, serving God. They're just waiting on you to get there. Then here they come, stick you with the same pen. They stuck you in 20 years ago. When you don't holler, then they, what's wrong? It's evident that something happened in your life. So Paul said, listen, I don't frustrate the grace of God. I don't just disrespect. I love God. I love his word. And everything is working for my good. Amen. And they say, Christ is, is, is alive in me. The law is dead to me, and Christ is alive. And, and I'm working by faith. And I'm working just for works. Amen. I'm working because Jesus Christ has saved my life. I surrender my life. And I'm serving him out of love. I'm serving him out of, out of concern for my Savior. And if you love God, let your light shine before men. They're going to see your good works and they're going to glorify God. Because they're going to say, listen, I know something will happen to you. I know. I know how you go off. I know what you do. I know what you say. But now you've been changed. God bless you today for a lesson. Listen. Come on, if you're, if, if you're not saved online today, let me tell you how to get saved. A, accept, admit, agree, Jesus Christ died for you. B, believe he rose again from the grave in three days. C, you confess, you're a sinner. Jesus is the Savior. And then you invite him in. 
That's how easy it is to be saved. Listen, I want you to uh, contact us, uh, Brother Elders Bryant, and uh, he'll give you more information. And uh, uh, if you got saved today, call us, let us know, contact us, and we all can grow together in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, that, that, that's, um, what, what's that phrase? How do we say that? Praise in the temple. Praise in the temple. What else? It's service time. Service time. All right. Amen. God bless everyone.